Welcome to the Portland Pentecostals podcast. We're happy you've decided to join us as we build a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Enjoy the message. Love those live mic moments, huh? Wasn't that a great story that they told for Christmas? I'm glad that it is a complete story that we get to enjoy the fruit of in our day. Purpose is so important. There's a purpose for every season. Spring is a time for planting and autumn is a time for reaping. An item has a purpose, a flashlight, such as to illuminate an item or a pathway that we can walk on. The entity As the church, we have a purpose to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you and I, as individuals, we have a purpose. We have a purpose to glorify God in our life. And the Bible says we are salt and light to the world to show the love of God to our world. And of course, today we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And we have understood that he came to usher in a new age. I am so glad I don't live in the Old Testament. First of all, when it snows, I actually get to drive in a car to where I need to go. (laughs) Second of all, I don't think that I could keep the law like it was meant to be kept. And Jesus Christ has come. Prophetic declaration concerning the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ begins in the book of Genesis and it goes throughout the Old Testament. But the prophet Micah gives us a reason for the birth of Jesus Christ in chapter 5 and verse 2. And you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou art little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. I love this passage of Scripture. I love it because the specific location of the advent or the first appearing or the birth of the Lord Jesus is given. And the end purpose of the Messiah is also declared, which is to be ruler in Israel. It also tells us uh, that his going forth is from the dimension before time existed and it will last forever and ever. And also included in that passage of scripture is the understanding that as long as they could remember, as long as mankind could recall, there had been a promise of a Messiah, a Savior, a Deliverer, a King that would come and deliver them. There was not a time when they could not remember that. Micah means like Yahweh. He was from a small town near the town of Gath. I use that reference because you understand the town of Gath was where Goliath was from. He lived about 25 miles from Jerusalem and he was a contemporary prophet with Isaiah and Hosea and Amos, which means he was alive at the time of Isaiah. There's something that's striking to me is Isaiah is one of the most prolific prophets concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he isn't able to tell us the location of his birth. He tells why he's coming and he's bringing joy and he's bringing light and he's bringing salvation to mankind. But it's only when he's joined together with his fellow prophet Micah that he begins to understand where Jesus is going to be born and that is in Bethlehem. That lets us know that as a body of Christ, as a group of believers, we really need each other to know the way. None of us have all the answers. None of us have all the solutions. Micah was not just mimicking another man. This wasn't his overactive imagination, but these were words straight from God. In Matthew 1 and 23, we read, Behold, a virgin shall bring a child and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's what one of the songs was about. Emmanuel, God with us, not just around us, but with us or among us. The reason it was necessary for God to come is because The task that needed to be performed to bring salvation could be performed by him and him alone. 
I am so glad when somebody shows up that can get the job done when I can't. Oh, I used to work on my vehicles, but now they're way too technical for me to work on. And I could probably crawl in the fender wells of my pickup and still work on that old uh, 5.3 liter. But the new trucks, it's like, uh, where does this plug in? And where does that plug in? And what's that controlled by? Uh, and we don't understand. And so we take it to a mechanic. Here they had a prophet. Here they had Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, because they were not able to give a sacrifice that was adequate for their sins. But this is what is amazing to me, that the men that were looking into the heavens, the Magi, understood that Jesus had arrived. And they followed the star, whether it was a supernova or whatever it was. We don't have an explanation other than a spiritual or scriptural explanation. It led them to the nation of Israel. And they assumed that Jesus would come to the capital city. They assumed that the Savior would come to the <clears throat> seat of government. And so they came to Herod, and Herod didn't even know he was alive. He didn't know he was being born. And so he demanded of the priests and the scribes, the priests were the ones who declared uh, the word of God, uh, and the scribes were the ones that copied it. They said, where is this one to be born that is king of the Jews? And Matthew 2 and 5 says, And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art thou not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. That's another reason why I like the scripture in Micah. Because it's used as proof text in the New Testament to tell them where the Messiah was born. And true to the word of the prophet, that's exactly where the Messiah was. He was in Bethlehem. Now we know that, the pro that Herod said, hey, when you find him, come and tell me where he is because I'm going to worship him. But not everybody that says they're going to worship the, the Messiah is going to worship the Messiah. And the government may reject the Savior. The government is not our hope. That's not where our help is. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So let's not be discouraged in this day in which we live. The hope is in Jesus Christ. Because he lives beyond the realm of time. He always has been, always will be. And he came and robed himself in flesh to die for me so that I could have eternal life. So Herod sends out the army to kill all the baby boys that are two and under. But this is what's cool is a man, a righteous man named Joseph has a dream. And in the dream, the angel says, hey, get out of here. Go to Egypt. You're going to be safe there. And he takes Jesus away to the land of captivity, to Egypt. And it's two years later, maybe, that he brings him back into Israel. But Jesus is spared because somebody is listening. God always protects his promises. The government tried to destroy it, but they couldn't do it. Those that were against his rising tried to keep him down, but they couldn't keep him down because he was God in the flesh. God is going to do what God wants to do, and I want to be a part of what God wants to do. I'm glad that I can be a part of that kingdom of heaven. But Jesus, I, I'm going to make some statements, and this is not to stir up trouble, but I, I just want us to see what Jesus' purpose was so we can understand our purpose. Jesus didn't come to fight for equality. He would have overthrown the Roman government, and he would have gotten rid of slavery. And I'm not saying slavery is right. Jesus didn't come to fight for the sovereignty of Israel as an earthly nation. He didn't come for ju social justice, and he didn't come up to set an earthly kingdom. The original intention of God was not simply to rule in a nation or a land called Israel, but he really wanted to live in the hearts of mankind. Oh, that's really cool, because that, that means it doesn't matter where I was born, he came for me. It doesn't matter what country I live in, it doesn't matter what part of town, it doesn't matter what my career choice was, uh, Jesus came for me. And those boundaries don't separate us. Jesus came for Calvary. We heard what the children so well depicted. Congratulations, children. Didn't they do a great job of singing and memorizing their lives? 
The writer of Hebrews in chapter 9 and 26 says, For then must he off have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. His whole reason was to put away our sin. I, I couldn't cover it. I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't pay for it. But Jesus said, I, I can die for your sin. And I can cover you in my blood through baptism. And I'm willing to do that. And if you'll let me do that, I've already paid, I've already paid for it. Calvary would lead us to his kingdom purpose. Jesus would make clear while answering Pilate in the judgment hall, and we talked about this, he went to Calvary, and there he is in this mock trial, and he's being asked, are you the king of the world? And Jesus says this, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. So isn't that kind of weird? It's like he comes as king but not to rule the earth. Good news is we didn't miss the coming of Christ. And we didn't miss the purpose of his coming. And we can still be a part of the purpose of his coming. The word of God reveals how the kingdom of God is manifest or revealed in our generation. And the final scripture that I'm going to read is in Romans 14 and 17. Paul writes to the church and says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's about having the Holy Spirit deep inside of our heart. God didn't come in the flesh so that he could make us a mighty army and arm us to overrule the governments of this world, but he came in the flesh so we could be free from sin and the law of sin and death or the penalty of death. And so today we have reason to rejoice. And a, I'd like for you all to stand because we're going to end this with celebration. I'm going to lead us in a repentant prayer today because if you have not received the Holy Spirit evidenced by speaking with tongues, you can receive that today. It's not something we manufacture. It's not something that we make happen, but it's something that God puts in our heart. And the only pre-qualifier is that we repent of our sins. In other words, we say, God, we're sorry for the way we've been living. We're sorry if we've offended you, if we've disobeyed you, if we've ignored you. And we want to walk in the direction that you want us to live in. Doesn't that make sense? That if he, we're going to be a part of his kingdom, we've got to live like he wants us to live. We've got to live by his guidelines. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer of repentance. And when we're done with that, The praise team is going to begin to sing a song. And I want us to just begin to celebrate. And we're going to end this time with a great celebration and rejoicing at what God has done in our life. And as we begin to celebrate and you begin to praise Jesus, you just let those words flow out of your mouth, whether it's in French or Swahili or Spanish or English or heavenly language. You just let that expression come out, and we're going to thank Jesus for what he has done. Would you join me in a repentant prayer? Dear Jesus, here we are today as a group asking you that you would cleanse us. Because I know, God, even in my daily life, sometimes I ignore the things you want me to do. And I I fail to perform as you would expect me to perform or ask me to perform. I ask for forgiveness for that, for not doing what I should do. And Lord, if there's anything that I have done that I should not have done, an attitude that I've harbored in my heart, thoughts that I have kept in my mind that are unrighteous, that are against your word and your will and your purpose. Forgive me God. Any deed that I have committed as small as it may seem to me. If it is in in direct contravention to your word and direct resistance to your will and to the purpose of your kingdom. I bring you a repentant heart. Jesus hear our cry today and together we say we repent. We repent. We repent and 
we want your spirit to live and have free flow in this place. Wash us and cleanse us now and listen to our prayer of repentance and we receive your forgiveness and now we begin to rejoice in you. Let us rejoice in you. In Jesus' name, we rejoice.